Namaskar everybody and welcome to the Navratri Satsang. So today we are on the second day of this Satsang. Let us start with the Prarthana. By the Guru's grace and the will of Shri Krishna, we have all assembled for this Navratri Satsang. May we have their guidance to be able to learn and adopt the teachings of the great Acharyas to progress on the path of our sadhana. Let us recite the Guru Parampara. Lakshmi Natha Samarambham Natha Yamuna Madhyamam Asmad Acharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Now we offer our prayers to the Alvars. Bhutam Sarascha Mahadah Vayabhatta Natha Shri Bhakti Sarakula Shekhara Yogi Vahan Bhaktangri Renu Parakala Yatindra Mishran Srimat Parankushamunim Pranatos Minityam. And finally, our obeisances to Sripad Ramanujacharya. Yonityam Achutapadam Buja Yukma Rukma. Vyamu Hatastaditarani Trinayamene. Asmad Guru Bhagavatos Yadayaika Sindho. Ramanujasya Charana Usharanam Prapadye. Now let us um, offer our prayers to Swami Pillai Lokacharya, who is the composer of this grantha called Navavida Sambandham. Lokacharya ya gurave, Krishna padasya sunave, samsara bhogi santasta, jiva jiva tave namaha. So in yesterday's satsang, we have discussed about the great qualities or the special features of this Acharya. So today we will move on directly to the topic by first focusing our attention on the Lord, on the beautiful form of the Lord and we can now move on to the Navavida Sambandha. So yesterday we talked about the first of the Sambandhas. So the Shloka which expresses all these nine relationships says Pitacha Rakshaka Sheshi Bharta Nyeyo Ramapati Swami Adharo Mamatmacha Bhokta Chadya Manuditaha. So Ramapati, we said, is the description of the Lord, that he is the Lord of Rama, of the Devi. And all the others are the relationships of the Lord with us. So yesterday we have talked about Pita, and today we will talk about the Lord in the second role as Rakshakaha, as the protector. So, uh, there, before we move further, I would just like to, Zarnaji is there in the satsang. Yeah. So, I would just like to uh, explain that bit. She asked yesterday, what is this about Adya Manuditaha? So, actually, um, all the other words in the shloka, they are the relationships. So, this is what is explained in one of the very basic primary mantras. Manu refers to mantra. So, Adya Manudita means it has been told in the Adya, means the foremost mantra. So, what is this foremost mantra? Because this Acharya is talking about the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. So, in this Sampradaya, there is something called as the Tiru Mantra, something called as the Holy Mantra. It is the Ashtakshara Mantra. So, that mantra is something which is to be obtained only by taking diksha. So only in a proper Guru Parampara, that mantra is to be taken. And although we may have taken that mantra, we are not supposed to do ucharan of that mantra in public. So for people who have not gone through that procedure. So here it refers to the what is called as the Ashtakshari mantra. So in that Ashtakshari mantra, there is initially the pranava. Then there is a word which conveys that I am offering my prayers. So, my namaskara like that. And finally, the name of Lord Narayana. So, because I am not able to openly declare and proclaim what is that mantra. But the meaning of that Adya Manuditaha means this, these relationships are exactly what are explained in that Ashtakshari mantra. So, for those who have gone through the procedure, they will know that mantra. 
for those who have not gone through that procedure it is enough to know that the foremost mantra in the shri vaishnava sampradaya in that by ucharan of that mantra we get an idea of these nine relationships of the lord with us okay i hope that has cleared the doubt for uh, zarna ji so today we will move on to the second relationship which is of the lord as rakshakaha he is the protector and we are the raksha we are the protected so we know yes we have all heard that famous shloka in the bhagavad gita where the lord is telling paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge so when he is saying paritranaya sadhunam he means that he is going to take avatar for protecting for taking care of uh, the sadhus the good people not just good in terms of ethically good and bad but those who are his devotees so there paritranaya sadhunam refers to somebody who is sadhu in the sense that they are engaged in spiritual practice just because somebody is good from the worldly point of view they are not doing wrong things they are not uh, doing bad things that does not make them a sadhu somebody who is not only not doing wrong things but also who is a bhakta of the lord such a person is whom the lord is referring to as sadhu now we have seen in yesterday's satsang we talked about the role of the lord as pita so he is the one who has created us he is the one who is uh, taking care of us at all times and many times what will happen is our own worldly people the parents who have given birth to us in this world or somebody who is part of our family so they may not always be able to protect us or in some cases they may not want to protect us so either they cannot protect us at all times or they may not want to protect us at all times but even in all such cases the lord is always there as the protector now what do we mean by saying that lord is uh, doing rakshane the lord is protecting us there are two aspects to rakshanam one is uh, i am sorry i have not put that point into this uh, ppt here um, one of those facets when you say rakshanam one facet is anishta nivritti and the other facet is ishta prapti so anishta nivritti means something which is harmful to me something which is undesirable for me he will get rid of that and ishta prapti something which the devotee wants something which the devotee desires he will grant it to him so there is uh, for from the devotee's point of view he will attain or he will acquire that which he wants and whatever is causing harm to him will be removed out of his path so that anishta nivritti and ishta prapti these are these are the tasks that lord does for the benefit of his bhaktas so we have seen so many examples in all our itihasas and puranas so we all know these examples we have seen the case of prahlada prahlada was such a devout child and his father hiranyakashipu was the most vicious demon now he was so demoniacal that he did not even see that this was my child so he was a father but did he take care of his child definitely not isn't it so there when hiranyakashipu uh, made a mess of things hiranyakashipu uh, did something which was exactly opposite to his role at that point it was a lord who stepped in to protect prahlada take the case of kaikeyi kaikeyi was the mother for bharata now as the mother she thought she is doing good to her son by securing the kingdom for him but what was it bharata was totally against that and if you look at it from the dharma point of view then it was totally wrong what she did so did she protect bharata no in fact she created extra problem for him isn't it so again there it was rama who gave solace to bharata take the case of ravana and vali they were brothers vali was the brother of sugriva did he was he helpful to sugriva no he created problems for sugriva what about ravana when vibhishana his brother advised him with all good will that don't uh, keep sita here you return her to rama ravana threw vibhishana out instead of listening to his advice so did the brother protect no and what about the pandavas during that infamous episode when draupadi was trying to be disrobed by the kauravas did they step in did they do something they were her husbands they were legally bound if not ethically and morally they were totally 
in a state where they had to be her protectors. But did they protect her? No. And who was it who came to her rescue? It was Lord Krishna. So in all these instances, if we see, it is the Lord who always steps in to protect the devotee. Now, whom exactly will the Lord protect in any given situation? First, he will protect those who are sadhus, as I already said, those who are engaged in spiritual austerities. Now, where have we seen this previously? We know the whole purpose of Ramavatara was to rid the earth of all the evil demons who were troubling all the uh, Rishi Muni who were doing tapascharya. So when Rama went to Vanavasa, then in that time when he was in the Dandakaranya forest, all the Rishis and sages came to him and they prayed to him. They said, you must do something. The, all these Rakshasas are troubling us and tormenting us. They are not letting us pursue our tapas. So you have to take care of them. You have to destroy them. So Rama promised them that yes, definitely I will destroy all those Asuras. And there is in fact uh, a shloka in the Valmiki Ramayana where it is said, Rama is saying that he is declaring. He says, if at all I have to separate, I may separate from Sita, but I will never separate from Lakshmana. If at all I have to, I may even separate from Lakshmana, but never will I give up my word and the vow which I have taken. So what is that vow that Rama has taken? That he will rid the forest and the entire uh, land from the evil Rakshasas. So like this, Rama came, he took Avatara. The whole purpose was to protect, to do Rakshana of the sadhus who were engaged in spiritual austerities. Secondly, whom does the Lord protect? Anybody who surrenders to him, irrespective of, without judging whether that person is good or bad, the Lord will accept somebody who does Sharanagati to him. And this is abundantly proven in the Vibhishana Sharanagati episode. So if you have, you must have definitely heard of and read about that uh, incident. So Vibhishana has come along with four Rakshasas who accompanied him. And he is asking that Rama should accept him. Now at that time, Rama has his answer. But he because he is with all the other Vanaras, he asks for their opinion. At that time, there are people like Sugriva, uh, Angada and others who say that, no, no, he is from the enemy camp. He definitely should not be accepted. Then there are some people who suggest that he should be killed. There are some people who suggest that uh, they should test him for some days and then see whether he has come as a spy from Ravana. There are people who say, just like you can't have a mango fruit growing on a neem tree. Similarly, this Vibhishana is the brother of Ravana. So definitely he's going to be a bad person. He can't be good. We should not accept him. And things like that. Then after all these people have spoken, Rama asks Hanuman for his opinion. And what Hanuman says, he says, I know this Vibhishana. I know that he is a dharmatma. When I went to Lanka, I have seen him. I have seen how pious he is. And he is a good person. So definitely we should accept him. So now Rama declares, he says, all the other people said that I should not accept Vibhishana because he is bad. Because he is from a bad family. So because of the badness, I should not accept him. And now Hanuman is saying I should accept him because of his good qualities. But none of you understood what was in my mind, what was in my heart. And what is it that is in Rama's heart? He says, the minute somebody has come and said that I want to be accepted by you, I am surrendering to you, then I don't need anything else as a qualification. The very fact that Vibhishana has come and he is surrendering is enough for me. I am not bothered about whether he is a good person. I am not bothered about whether he is a bad person. The very fact that he has surrendered to me means I am going to accept him. So he says, Sakradeva prapannaya tavasmiti chajate abhayam sarva bhutebhyo dadam yetat vratam mama. It is my vrata. That Sakrad, only once, even once, if somebody comes and says, I am yours, then I will protect that person against everything. So that is how Rama has shown that anybody who surrenders, and then in fact he tells Sugriva that go and convey this to Vibhishana, bring him with all due honor. And then he adds another point there. He says, suppose when you go to bring Vibhishana, you see by some chance that Ravana has come there, 
please don't come back to ask me questions again about whether we should accept Ravana or not. I will accept him also if he comes and surrenders to me. That is the extent to which the Lord is accepting and gives protection to anybody who surrenders to him. So that is the second instance now whom the Lord protects. And finally, there is the third category. He protects those whom he loves. And this is shown through the episode when the Pandavas were in Vanavasa. So we know that the Pandavas had been banished from the kingdom after that gambling match they lost and all that. So there was a point of time when all the five brothers were in the forest. And then there was one Brahmana who came there saying that uh, he has lost the Samagri which is used to make the fire, to kindle the fire. So he is not able to do his Agnihotra. He is not able to perform his ritualistic sacrifice every day. So he comes begging to these people saying, please find me my uh, this material. Uh, then they all go in search and they keep hunting and running here and there. And finally, they are in the middle of the deep forest and they are totally tired and everybody is very thirsty. So they decide to go look for water. So first it is Sahadeva who goes in search of water. When he goes there, he wants to drink water. There is a lake he finds. He wants to drink. There is a voice which stops him and says, no, you can't drink this water. You have to first answer my question. So Sahadeva says, no, 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 I can't do all that. I have to drink the water. He drinks the water and he falls into a uh, unconscious. This repeats with all the four brothers until finally Yudhishthira comes there. And then we know this whole thing which is called as the Yaksha Prashna episode. So we will not go into the details of that in today's satsang. But it is told that actually now all these four brothers, they become unconscious and they are lying there as if dead. And Yudhishthira is the only one who is standing and he agrees to answer those questions of the Yaksha. And finally, it turns out that the Yaksha was Dharmaraja himself. So, what is the background to this? It is told by the Acharyas that actually at the time when these Pandavas were in Vanavasa, it, this Duryodhana, he performed some uh, sacrifice, he did some Homa and something in a bad way. And he created a demon and he instructed that demon that you should go and kill the Pandavas. He was so jealous. He didn't even want to take the risk that they may come back from the Vanavasa. So he wanted to make sure they are killed. So he sent this demon saying that you have to kill these Pandavas and come back. Now, the rule there is that if somebody is already dead, then that uh, demon cannot kill them any or do anything to them. Right. So, Krishna learnt of this. He knew about this. Now, there was no time for Krishna to advise Duryodhana and make him change his ways. Anyway, he had tried that before and Duryodhana was not going to mend his ways. Right? There is no way he could interfere with the demon because that demon has been created by whatever rituals have been prescribed. So, he cannot, if the ritual is there, if that has been done correctly, then the Lord will not interfere with the rules of nature. So, whatever... Um, act has been performed for that, whatever is the phala, that will definitely be there. So if the demon has to be created, Krishna will not be able to stop or he will not, he will choose not to stop that demon from being created. Now, can Krishna tell Pandavas that, see like this, this is what is the thing. So you run away or you go away somewhere. They will also not listen. They will say, we are Kshatriyas. How can we run away like that? How can we pretend and all that? So he had to do something. And that is why he created this entire episode where the Pandavas were in that unconscious state. So when the demon reached there, it saw that they were dead and it went away without doing anything to them. So here the Acharyas explain that he loved the Pandavas so much. Krishna had so much affection for the Pandavas. And then, although they didn't ask him to save them, they didn't even know they were in danger. And yet, the Lord came there. He did something in such a way that they were saved. So these are the three criteria. If we meet any of these three criteria, the Lord definitely jumps in to protect us. If we are sadhus who are engaged in spiritual austerity, if we are somebody who has surrendered to the Lord and said that, let your will rule my life. And if we are somebody who are very much dear to the Lord, in all these three cases, he will definitely come and protect his devotees. So this same thing has been explained by uh, Varaha Deva. 
So we know that one of the uh, avatars of the Lord is that of Varaha Swami. So when the earth, when Bhumi had been um, submerged in the Pralaya by Hiranyaksha, at that time, Lord Sriman Narayana took avatara in the form of a wild boar, in the form of Varaha. And he went and fought Hiranyaksha, killed him, destroyed him, and he rescued Bhumi Mata. And then once he had rescued her, he made her sit on his lap and he tried to provide solace to her. Now, she had been protected by the Lord, but still she was kind of trembling. So the Lord supported her and he asked her, what is it? Why are you worried still? What happened? I have made sure that you are protected. At that time, she said, Bhumi Devi said, that yes, you have protected me, but all my children, who are these all her children? We, human beings who are living on the earth, all my children, many times they make so many mistakes and they are going to incur your anger by doing wrong things. So do please tell something which I can pass on to them and which will help for them to stay protected in this world. So at that time, Varaha Swami declared one particular thing and this is called as the Varaha Charama Shloka. We know that in the Bhagavad Gita, there is that uh, shloka where Krishna is saying, come and surrender to me and I will take care of you. Isn't it? Then Sarvadharman Parityajya, he tells that shloka. Then there is the shloka which I mentioned before in Ramayana where Rama is saying, Sakradeva Prapannaya, once you come and surrender, I will take care of you. In both these cases, we are seeing that there is some need from the devotee's side. The devotee has to surrender to the Lord. He has to say, I am surrendering, right? Now, what Varaha Swami does is he goes one step ahead. He says, never mind. Even if you don't say that you are surrendering to me. But if you are in a good state of mind and at that time you pray to me and you think that, yes, I am belonging to the Lord, that itself is enough for me to protect you. So in the Varaha Charma Shloka, he says, now normally what is told that at the time of death, whatever thoughts a person has, then that person becomes that in the next birth. He gets a janma about whatever he is thinking at the time of death. Now we don't know what will be our status at the time of death. Whatever samskaras we have had throughout our life, we don't know how what we will be thinking of at that time. And there is a risk that we will become that whatever we are thinking. If we are caught in pain and in distress and we are having kafavata pitta coming out of us and all that. What will be our status at the time of death? We Can we guarantee that we will think about the Lord at that time? But Lord Bara has said, never mind at that time if you can't think of me. I will come, I will make sure that I remember you and I will come and protect you. So if provided, when you are being in good health, when you are in your younger age itself, if you have said that you belong to me, if you have had a prayerful attitude towards me, if you have surrendered to me at that time, you have said that this is my Lord, then I will make sure that at the time of death, whether you think of me or you don't think of me, I will come and take care of you. So in this Varaha Charma Shloka, Lord says, Stite manasi susvaste, sharire satiyo naraha, dhatu samye stite smarta, vishwarupam chamamajam, tatastam riyamanam tu, kashtapashana sannibham, Aham smarami madbhaktam nayami paramangatim. You may be fallen like a log. You have no control over your senses at that time when you are about to die. But aham smarami madbhaktam. I will remember my bhakta. And nayami paramangatim. I will take him to my supreme abode. I will take him to Sri Vaikuntha. And there he will stay performing seva to me at all times. So this much of grace the Lord is showering on us. How much protection he is giving. He is saying, you can't remember. Huh? Okay, fine. I will only remember you. What bigger proof do we need of how graceful the Lord is? Of how benevolent, how, uh, how much he is ready to give to the Bhakta. Of how fond he is of the Bhakta. Right? So today we will see two examples. One is of a Bhakta of the Lord. And the other is of one of the Alvars. So this Bhakta of the Lord, there was a tailor 
called Parameshti. This Parameshti was living in Delhi. But again, he was a very great bhakta of Lord Jagannath of Puri. Now, he was a very good tailor and he was very skillful and all that. And he was also a very good bhakta. So, all the time, whenever he was doing his tailoring work, whatever he was doing, he would keep remembering Lord Jagannath and praying to him. And he would do his work with the bhava that Lord is only getting it done through me. Now, once what happened, there was a sultan in that place. And that uh, king heard that, okay, this Parmeshti tailor is very good. So, he had got some very uh, precious kind of cloth where it was some velvet-like material. And into that, they had actually woven in threads with gold and silver. And they had embedded some rubies and pearls and all, um, you know, uh, gems, precious stones. So, then what happened? He called this Parmeshti and he said, look, this is some very expensive cloth. It's very good quality thing, material. I want you to make two pillow covers for my pillows, for me and my queen. I want you to make two pillow covers with this cloth. You prepare it and get it to me. So Parmeshmi, Parmeshti took that cloth and he went. Now, as he was doing his work, as he usually was thinking of uh, Puri Jagannath. And coincidentally, it happened that it was the day of Jagannath Ratha Yatra. So at that time, one thought came into this Parmeshti's mind. He thought, this cloth is so beautiful. It is so nice. What is the use of this cloth for this ordinary human being, this king? The king of all kings, Lord Jagannath, who is there. It would be so nice if I could offer this one of these pillow covers to the Lord. That thought came in his mind because he was so full of bhakti to the Lord. When he, whenever he saw anything beautiful, he thought that he wants to offer it to the Lord. The minute that thought came to him, after some time this Parmeshti saw, there's one pillowcase has disappeared and there's only one left. He couldn't understand what happened and he was scared. Now the Sultan is going to be very angry and punish him. But what to do? He was an honest person. So he went back to the king with that one pillow cover and he said, uh, I have prepared the pillow cover and uh, here it is. But I'm sorry, there's only one. <coughs> so the king asked him, what happened to the other one? So he told the whole story as it happened. He said, uh, I was preparing it and it was almost done. I had made both of them. But then suddenly after some time, I couldn't find one. Only one was there. And he told that in my mind, I was thinking of Jagannath. Maybe it has gone to Jagannath, he said. This law, this uh, Sultan got very angry. He ordered that this Parmeshti should be thrown into the jail. And he said, how dare you do such things to me? Let us see now. Let your Jagannath come and protect you. He said that and he threw this fellow in jail. Now that night, late at night when the king was sleeping, suddenly he woke up and he had got a dream that he was being beaten by somebody. And when he woke up and saw there were actually marks of, and those gashes on his arms as if he had been hit with a whip. Nobody had come near him, but he was all over the body. He had been hit with a whip and he was in terrible pain. And then he opened his eyes and he was crying in pain. At that time, he had a voice. He heard a voice telling that you were making fun of my bhakta. Now you go and see, go to the jail, go see what is his condition in the jail. You were sarcastically saying that will Jagannath come to protect you? Now you go and see in the jail, he said. So this king in that bad state only, he went into the jail and he saw all the guards had fallen asleep. All the jail doors were open. This Parmeshti had been tied with handcuffs and all those links and chains and all that and very badly beaten. But when, he, when the king looked there, he saw that very relaxedly, Parmeshti had no handcuffs in his hands. All the chains, everything were removed and very calmly he was sleeping. So he realized that, oh, it is indeed Jagannath who has come to the rescue of this Parmeshti. And then he ordered, he was scared now. So he ordered that let this Parmeshti be released from the jail. And Parmeshti was released. And after that day, nobody ever saw Parmeshti in Delhi again. And it is assumed that he went off to Puri to serve his beloved Lord Jagannath. So from this story, we can understand how if somebody has complete faith in the Lord, then the Lord definitely protects that devotee. So this is one of the stories. Now we have about nine minutes left. So I will quickly go into the story of the Alvar. Now here, this is about an Alvar called as Tirumangai Alvar. So here we will try to see how the Lord protects the devotee from going on to a wrong track for a very long time. At least that is the way I have understood this. So there was one uh, person 
who called he was um, before he became alvar this tirumangi alvar was a name given to him later now he was basically known as neelan and they used to also call him kalyan he was neelan so this uh, man was belonging to the caste of the rulers king that category of people he was not a king but he was one of the ruler class of people so he had one small place where he was the ruler he was under the king but and he used to do all that uh, you know administration and all those things now one day he happened to see one beautiful girl and he wanted to marry her that girl's name was kumudavalli so he wanted to marry this kumudavalli so he went and asked for permission from her father so kumudavalli's father said it is up to her if she agrees then you can marry so when he went and approached kumudavalli she lay, put two conditions she said first thing is you should become a vaishnava and second thing is you should make sure that every day you do annadana and you serve food to 1008 people then on the, if you are meeting these two conditions only then i will marry you she was a very pious girl so he agreed he was so desperate he agreed and he made, went to the temple of the lord who was there nearby and he picked up that shri churna tirman the holy um, tilak which the shri vaishnavas wear and he wore that and he said okay i have done i am i have become a vaishnava now and he also um, started feeding people every day with whatever wealth he had because he was a ruler of that small place he used up his wealth then okay seeing what he is doing kumadavalli agreed and she married him now he had to meet that condition life long every day he had to feed 1008 people so he kept he used up all his wealth then he used up all the whatever he was collecting as taxes from his people and it had to be given to the king he collected that and he finished that also then the king got to know of it he punished him that something happened in the middle now finally he was left with no resort he had no more money of his own he had no more money from anybody else so he decided that okay if i have to steal i will steal and rob but i will make sure that i am doing this seva whatever i promised to that girl, to my wife so he started uh, you know robbing people who would pass by through the forest he had some servants with him who were also his you know um, comrades so with all of them with their help he started doing this now one day there was a wedding party which passed by there was a bride there was a groom there was also many people who came with the bride and groom and they all had lot of precious things with them and they had lot of gold and ornaments so this news came to this uh, neelan and then what he did he decided that okay now today i'm going to loot these people because if they are having so much wealth then it will last me for many days i can do this uh, annadana for many many days so he went there and he um, surrounded with his friends they went and surrounded these people they pulled everything all the ornaments from everybody they collected everything and put it into one bag now finally when all that had been collected and he wanted to uh, take it all and go he noticed that there was one ornament in the leg of that groom so he went close to that groom and he said remove that and give so the groom said no i can't remove it if you can you remove so he bent and he tried to pull it with his hands he was not able to pull it then because it was not coming it was like too much tight uh, there are some people who say it was the toe ring like Uh, jewel some other people who say it was like an anklet around the feet uh, around the ankle sorry so whatever it may be this uh, neelan he bent down and he tried to bite it with his teeth now he his head when he was doing this his head touched the feet of that bridegroom okay so some change started in him now anyway he decided okay it's not coming off so he said fine you, you leave that i don't want that i will take all the other thing and he put his hand to lift the bag he was not at all able to lift that bag up how much ever he tried and he was a very strong person i mean he couldn't lift he looked sarcastically at the bridegroom and he said what is this it looks like you have put some mantra on this that is why i am not able to lift it what mantra have you put he said so that bridegroom said come closer i will tell you what is that mantra and when this neelan came close by this bridegroom whispered you remember i told in the beginning of our satsang there is something called as the tiru mantra the ashtakshari mantra that bride room whispered that ashtakshari mantra in the ear of this neelan and at that time he had complete transformation now suddenly when he looked at the bride and bride room he realized that they are nobody but the divya dampati they are lord shri manarayana and his consort the devi who have come there so shri and narayana both are there and he completely underwent a transformation and 
this lord is said to be his acharya because he did upadesha of that mantra to him now after this he completely changed his lifestyle and he became whom we today know as tirumangayalvar this episode is so vivid now why do we think what role did the lord play here this person was doing something good but he was doing it in a wrong way and he was going on the wrong track and if he kept robbing people maybe he was doing it for a good purpose to do annadana but if he kept doing wrong things then he he would be committing sin continuously isn't it so the lord was very concerned that he should not go down that wrong track and the lord wanted to use him as an instrument to spread bhakti among the people so that is why the lord took that form came there did mantropadesha to him and through all this he actually protected the bad things from happening to him and that is why this alvar even till today in the place called tirnangur they enact this whole drama of how the wedding party was going of how this neelan came there how he demanded the jewels how the bridegroom did upadesha and how he transformed and became tirumangai alvar so this we can learn that if the lord decides that he wants to protect us then there is nothing that will stop him but if we want that we need to make sure that we qualify for the lord's protection how do we do that first we must surrender to his lotus feet we must do sharanagati second we must make him feel love for us how will he feel love for us we have to do anukulya sankalpam pratikulya varjanam whatever is good we have to do that good means whatever is going to be pleasing to the lord we have to do that whatever is displeasing to him pratikulya that we have to avoid doing we have to completely stop doing that so by doing anukulya sankalpam and pratikulya varjanam the lord will feel that yes this devotee is mine and the third thing is whenever we are in good health itself you remember that baraha charma shloka what lord baraha has told that when you are in good health when you are still fit and fine then start remembering me start focusing on me begin your sadhana and by doing all this we must make sure that we never move away from the ambit of the lord from the surroundings of the lord it is told here by the acharyas how when bharata was cribbing and complaining no that uh, rama went away to vanavasa my mother did such a uh, foolish thing who asked her to do all this and he was at that time he tries to think you know why all this happened so at that time he says um ar dasharath raja why did he do this he could have prevented this but then he thinks no he was uh, a satyavakya so he couldn't go against his words so he had to keep his promise being from the kishvaku vamsha he couldn't go back on his word so he had to keep his word to kaikeyi what about kaikeyi first he was angry with kaikeyi then he says kaikeyi also after all she is a mother so what we can't blame her then he says maybe it was mantra's fault then he says no she was a dasi she had tried to do good to her mistress then he says why rama he should have told no i will only rule no but rama will do uh, pitravakya paripalana so we can't blame rama he says it is my mistake it is my papa and because of that all this happened so then here the acharya says when we go away from the lord we are always in danger the closer we are to the lord we are always in good company so let us we have run out of time totally kritagnata let us offer gratitude to all the acharyas to everybody the commentators and at the lotus feet of shri krishna and guru for having us this satsang namaskar thank you everybody i hope next time i will be able to plan it better so that we get little more time for questions also thank you very much namaskar thank you everyone